Get five coffins ready. Hey everyone, welcome to my guide for Pele. Pele is a hyper-aggressive assassin who is, in the most loving way possible, the definition of a face roll character. Her range, poke, and crowd control are all pretty limited, but she makes up for it with some of the most insane damage and sustain in the assassin category. Pele's builds typically mirror this do-or-die mentality. Pele is really all about putting out as much damage as possible when she gets in, and she typically only gets out of a fight if a majority of the enemy team is already dead, rather than by mounting an escape after she's killed her primary target, like most assassins would. She's not an awful solo laner, but definitely struggles there when the meta gets a bit too tanky. That said though, when hybrid items like Void, Shifters, and Berserker Shield are good, she likes to grab those too. As for her relic choice, it's typically the classic Blink and Beads combo. You can probably skirt by if you really need Beads and Ages, but a lack of Blink is going to feel very noticeable on her. Kicking off Pele's cacophony of explosive mechanics is her passive. Once Pele drops below 50% HP, whether by an enemy god or minions, she gains scaling physical power and 40% lifesteal as well as 15% ability lifesteal for 4 seconds. Needless to say, this passive is absolutely massive when diving onto an enemy team, especially considering her massive amounts of AoE damage putting that ability lifesteal to work. It's not uncommon to see a Pele dive bomb the backline and watch her health bar flicker back and forth as she rapidly heals back all the damage being dealt to her. Blinking into the backline may seem like a daunting task, but this passive should help you gain a bit of confidence while doing so. While you initially don't have to play around it, and rather simply let it happen, just keep in mind that once under 50% HP, any damage dealt to you once the cooldown is over is going to proc the passive again, meaning that stray poke from enemy gods or doing a camp can make you lose one of your biggest resources. Another one of your biggest resources as Pele is your first ability. Pele fires a fast moving magma projectile, this projectile stopping once it reaches maximum range. Once stopped, it begins firing itself back with a low damaging projectiles, this number of projectiles increasing with the level of the ability. This ability is wonderfully simple, but since Pele has two charges of this ability with individual cooldowns, which you can keep track of here on the passive meter, it opens up Pele to a sea of possibilities and most notably burst damage, since you could just spam them out. And honestly, that's what you'll be doing a lot of the time with this ability once you're in the opponent's face. Just mashing it and utilizing your basic attack cancels for insane amounts of damage. And of course, it's very useful in the solo lane as a clear tool as well, especially when you combine it with the return damage. Speaking of which, it's really not something you need to prioritize as Pele. If you can make the return projectiles graze the enemy while you're dive bombing them, good. But don't stress about it if you don't get much or any of the return damage on your main target. Using this for a poke tool isn't bad either, but late game you really want to save this ability just in case your team gets a good engage or needs you to counter engage. You're going to need the extra burst from hitting both charges of this ability for maximum effectiveness. Helping set you up for this burst combo is Pele's second ability. Pele charges up for a moment and then unleashes an AoE around her, damaging and knocking up anyone in melee range of her in a 360 degree circle. Pele's third ability, nah I'm just joking, once you rank this ability up to rank 3, Pele will have the same charge of time but instead will emit the base AoE circle as well as another circle at a wider radius after a short delay. Then at rank 5, this occurs again, creating another less damaging circle AoE which fires after a short delay following the second circle that you gained at the rank 3 of this ability. If Pele is CC'd at any point after her initial windup, the entirety of the ability will still go off. And if she's CC'd before it actually goes off, the cooldown won't be initiated. Playing around these second AoE circles can be a bit trepidatious, since they are so slow and really don't do much damage. That said, there's something to keep in mind before you begin comboing someone, since this can aid in self-heal as frontliners try to pull you off their backline. Additionally, they can also catch squishies who are a little too trigger happy with their movement abilities off guard. Since any squishy with a dash that lacks knockoff immunity, like Apollo or Cernanos, they can be caught by one of the outer circles as they try to dash away from you. While this doesn't happen all too often, it's almost always a death sentence, in part thanks to her third ability. Pele begins burning the fuel in her passive meter, which starts at 100 fuel. In the first stage of this ability, she drains 5 fuel every half second, meaning that if you stay in the first stage and expend all of your fuel, you can stay in this state for a total of 10 seconds. In this state, Pele gains movement speed as well as a circle AoE around her, which does damage over time to anyone currently standing in it, meaning that to keep applying it, you need to keep them in this circle. Then, whenever this ability is not activated, Pele will immediately begin regenerating her fuel. While the initial 30% movement speed boost is great, sometimes you need something a little more. That's where reactivating this ability comes in. Pele begins burning fuel at a rate of 10 per half second, meaning that this state can only last for 5 seconds. Now though, Pele gains a massive 60% movement speed buff, and this AoE around her begins dealing significantly more damage, the full duration of which is around 1.5 times the damage of the first stage. This ability does not have a cooldown, but instead cannot be activated at less than 10 fuel, and can be cancelled by pressing the cancel ability button. 
In most situations, staying in the first stage of this ability to close the gap, then activating the second stage once close to your target is a good way to use this ability. Sometimes, however, the only way to close the gap on some targets, especially to avoid excessive range damage, is to start with stage 2 right off the bat, and try to use your blink to help close the gap and start applying the incredibly high burn damage. While 10 seconds is a long time in Smite, you still want to manage your fuel as best you can, as the extra movement speed and damage is sometimes the only way to close out kills without using your ultimate which part of me wanted to start this guide with, since it ties her core three abilities together so well. Paley becomes CC immune and winds up, then dashes forward stopping on the first wall or enemy god hit. If she collides with a god, she deals massive damage to the god and slows them. Then, regardless of whether or not she hits an enemy god, she gains three enhanced basic attacks to deal bonus damage when they hit an enemy, a god or a minion, and deal a massive shockwave of damage in a cone behind the target by the enhanced basic attack. This shockwave works wonders with her passive, making any collateral god damage or especially minion damage heal you immensely as you just do your thing as Pele. So here it is, the catalyst for Pele completely obliterating any squishy in the game. The initial damage, plus the enhanced basic attacks, plus her first and second ability, yeah, nobody's making it out alive unless they age your damage or you get yourself peeled off. But a lot like Tsukiyomi, mistime this ultimate in either a too aggressive or too passive manner and you're in for a bad time. Too early and you're just gonna get peeled off before you can deal any damage. Too late and, well, again, you're probably just gonna get peeled off. This of course can be circumvented by instead starting with a blink initiation, then following with your ultimate if and when they use their movement abilities to get away, which in most cases they will. That said though, do a basic blink combo late game and you may end up dead before you can even try to use your ultimate for damage, instead of having to waste it as an escape yourself. So then, ulting in as your other teammates engage on the enemy team to keep the frontliners off of you is your best bet, then utilizing your third ability for chase down, unless of course you can find a straggler in the jungle, which Pele can easily dispense of at any stage of the game past level 5. Here's a few examples of combos with Pele. For ability leveling, you want to start with your first ability, then at level 2, you can really spring for either your second or third ability, but for me I always found leveling the 2 second to be best for extra clear. From there you want to max your 1, then your 3, then your 2. And of course level the ultimate whenever you can. Playing Paley well is really a matter of confidence. Now, I'm not about to give you a pep talk, but you really need to push your limits on Paley to get the most out of her. And frankly, there's going to be some times where you surprise yourself with just how much damage you can deal when you find an opening onto a squishy target. I hate to undersell a god's difficulty to you, but really, other than managing your fuel and your third ability, there's really not much in the way of mechanical complexity with Paley. That's not to say that Paley is exclusively a low-skill god. Like all other assassins, especially the aggressive ones, the better the opponents are, the harder it is for you to do your job. That said, a well-timed beads or ultimate to counteract CC can be all it takes for you to break a team fight wide open, but blowing all of your resources with the wrong timing has the same negative effect that a well-timed combo will have a positive one. To get better at Pele, don't be afraid to really push yourself and dive hard onto squishy targets when you see an opening. Just uh, keep beads handy, eh? That's all I have on Pele for now though, thanks for watching.